Hi everyone and welcome to this edition of Super Dwarf Sunday. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary and this is Cal Seti from Reach Out Reptiles. Today is Sunday, May 17th, 2020, and we are well over halfway through our series of episodes about enrichment for snakes. Remember that the Association of Zoos and Aquariums recognizes five enrichment categories for animals. Those are cognitive, dietary, physical, sensory, and social. In our previous episodes, we have discussed dietary, physical, and sensory enrichment. Today, we're gonna to talk about social enrichment and what that means for snakes. Let's talk about what social means in a broad sense, and then discuss what social might mean as far as in a context of the snake world. Animals known to be social as a species are organisms that live collectively. They regularly interact in groups or they need companionship to thrive. An example would be equines. I run an equine sanctuary. Yes, we do have other species here, but primarily we work with horses. And as a species, horses have evolved to live communally in groups called herds. In fact, a horse living alone is unable to express many of its natural behaviors and may actually develop aberrant behaviors or failure to thrive. Aside from obviously coming together for reproduction, snakes are not typically known as social animals. Now, some current research has been published in scientific literature <laughs> that supports a few species of snakes being social and living communally. Examples of this would be rattlesnakes and garter snakes. Other research has revealed some species of snakes may interact cooperatively in the form of hunting behaviors and that some snake mothers after incubating their eggs may actually guard and maternally care for their young up to a couple weeks after hatching. All that aside, being a social animal who needs social interaction for behavioral health does not mean that solitary species can't benefit from social enrichment, which is different than needing to be social as a species. Remember that enrichment is temporary. It's something that's changed often. So while your snake's hide or shelf is a permanent and likely much used piece of enclosure furnishings, it's not considered enrichment. Enrichment would be a novel item added to your snake's enclosure for a few hours or a few days and then removed or changed out for something else. Enrichment is meant to be stimulating and generate interest and curiosity. It's meant to encourage physical exercise, mental stimulation, or just a break from the normal routine. In this sense, even snakes that are not social species can benefit from social enrichment. We're going to talk about how they may do that. Social enrichment for snakes can include visual, olfactory, or other sensory cues from conspecifics without the animals having direct contact. This can be accomplished with snakes in nearby enclosures within the same room by allowing one snake out at a time in an exercise space that's used by many or by allowing snakes to explore each other's enclosures when one snake is somewhere else. This can also be done by placing sheds from one snake in with a different snake or trading out enclosure furnishings between snakes. Now note that as I talk about these things, and I'm talking about all of this indirect physical contact between the snakes, that these are snakes who have lived in my family for a long period of time over a year and have cleared quarantine. If you're introducing a new snake into your family, you definitely wanna keep that snake quarantined from your other snakes and not allow sharing of any enclosure furnishings or sharing of any kind of space or even sharing the air that they breathe, if at all possible, until you know that that snake is healthy and doesn't have anything wrong with it and is out of a quarantine period. Let's move on to the social enrichment for snakes. You can allow snakes that are not known to eat each other or 
snakes that are not known to immediately engage in combat to explore common areas at the same time. I've had as many as seven Morelia Bredley out at once, and some have shown interest in one another. Some have met each other and then gone their separate ways. And Others have avoided each other altogether. On occasion, I've had a couple choose to rest together while they're out. After a period of time out in the exercise space or the common areas, each snake is then put back into their normal enclosures by themselves. Another thing I observe regularly is that it's very common when one snake is out exercising to observe them climbing over and around the other snake enclosures, clearly looking at and showing interest in the other snakes and smelling them through the doors or through the screen or any other openings in the enclosure if they're able to. So they're investigating these other snakes with interest and the snakes within the enclosure usually come out or come to the door or the glass or the screen showing reciprocal interest by smelling and following along the path of the snake that's out until they have moved on to another area. Social interaction among snakes, just like other enrichments, should be generating interest and curiosity in something new or providing a novel experience. Social interaction ideally is going to provide mental stimulation and interesting sensory experiences for your snake. If you're noticing behavior that indicates fear or distress, that the snake is getting into a feeding response, or if you're observing any agonistic behavior such as combat or body postures indicating territoriality, then stop the activity immediately and put the snake or snakes back into their normal habitat. Social enrichment may not be a category suitable for every snake, and it may not be something every snake keeper should try to provide. Just always remember that safety should come first and that the point of the experience is to benefit the snake, not to cause it fear, distress, or harm. Also keep in mind that social enrichment is not the same thing as cohabitation. And this is a subject that we could possibly explore in a future video. One more thing to consider before we move on is do snakes benefit from social interactions with other species? Well, sometimes, but not always. Sometimes snakes are genuinely interested in other species, and then sometimes they have no interest whatsoever in interacting with their human keepers or other species, other than those that they would normally eat, of course. And this is evidenced by the fact that they hide or try to get away. If the snake is doing that, then they're not interested in interacting. Now there are some snakes that do gain some enrichment from interacting. A few of our snakes that are in our family readily engage in training with us. And that does not usually involve physical contact, but it's more of a mental exercise. And then a couple of our snakes will choose physical contact with me for climbing or for a general space to move around on versus contact with available inanimate objects in the area. Now, one example is our corn snake, Normal. He will come out of his enclosure directly onto my hand. And he will continue returning to me when I try to put him on activity stations or inanimate objects. Now, TC, he is kind of middle of the road with his desire to interact with us physically or not. Sometimes he's happy to interact physically with me. And in fact, in the video where I was answering your questions about physical enrichment, I tried to put him on an activity station while I was talking and he wanted no part of it. He wanted to stay with me during the filming of that entire video. But as you see during this video, he's very interested in climbing away from me. He's interested in climbing on the back of this couch. He's interested in climbing towards the camera. He may be interested in these other two snakes that are back here in this enclosure. 
Now, he's not stressed out by me holding him or handling him. And that's evidenced by the fact that he's calmly climbing around on me. He doesn't have a death grip on my arms or hands. He's not coiling or wrapping around me. And he is eager to climb in my hair and on my glasses as usual. That's something that he seems to like to do. But sometimes he can't wait to get onto a climbing tree or other items. And then at times he wants to come right back to me when I attempt to set him down somewhere. Most snakes in my experience, however, are going to prefer going their own way and are not generally a type of animal that seeks out human contact and handling. That's just not who they are. They aren't a cuddly species like a dog or a cat can be, and they're not an intrinsically social species that actually thrives and needs physical contact like horses are, for example. As for any benefit from social interaction between snakes and other non-human species, I advise caution. Remember that with the exception of egg eaters, that snakes are obligate carnivores and they eat other animals to survive. My observations with our family of about 70 snakes is that they show mild interest in our dogs and horses without getting into feeding mode or displaying fear and distress. They show some mild interest in curiosity, smelling them directly or smelling them on me. If I have horse hair or barn smells on me, or if I've been interacting with the dogs, they, they show mild interest in curiosity, smelling my clothes or smelling me when I have those scents on me. Cats are another story. And I avoid any type of contact between our cats and snakes whatsoever because the behaviors that I've witnessed, even with the remotest contact or smell of cats, is not something that is enriching, it's something that concerns me. The snakes have displayed a heightened sense of arousal and defensive postures to the extent that if I have been working with or handling cats extensively, I shower and change clothes prior to working with my snakes. I do not have to do this after close physical contact with our horses and dogs. It's just something to keep in mind and each individual may react differently and you may totally observe something different regarding the behavior between snakes and cats within your own family. I just wanna caution you about any time that you are having an obligate carnivore that eats other animals interact with other species. And I wanna caution you that if you've been interacting intimately with other species and have a strong smell of those other species on you, that it can elicit undesired behaviors and reactions from your snake. So please just keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at how TC reacts to close proximity with other organisms and how they react to him.
everybody. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Super Dwarf Sunday. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Next time, we are going to finish up our enrichment series talking about cognitive enrichment. I think that's going to be a heavy subject, and I think it may have to span over two or three videos, but I'll see how that pans out as I start to do the research and prepare the episode. Until next time, everybody, please remember to be kind and love your animals.